Welcome to the Lift Your Story podcast with guest Christopher Howard, author, trainer, and personal development coach. Hi, everyone. I'm Lorianne. I am that gal from Milton, Ontario, Canada, and I'm with... I'm that guy. I'm Roy Miller from Dallas, Texas. We'd like to welcome you to our Lift Your Story podcast. Today, we have with us Christopher Howard, who is an author and a trainer and personal development coach. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, awesome. Uh, awesome to have you here. And you guys are out there in Canada. I love it. I'm in Texas. Oh, you're in Texas. My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you couldn't tell because I don't have an accent. So I'm, I'm that, just... Well, you know what? Honestly, I, would, I don't think I would have recognized it had you not pointed it out. <laughs> See? Told you, Lorian, no accent. Well, one thing, Chris, I've got to ask you, you know, your, your personal development, but what is a lifestyle turnaround. I've never heard that term before. Well, I do. Uh, well, I do turnaround coaching. So uh, my emphasis, you know, I've been in the field for 25 years and um, I, I keep asking myself, okay, what's your specialty here, Chris? Because what I do is accelerated human change and, and turnaround coaching. So, uh, and that's what I spent 25 years of my life studying, teaching to thousands of people around the world but the, it's about how do you how do you change something rapidly, whether that be physically, emotionally, spiritually, or financially. Um, and so uh, it's an eclectic group of tools that I've pulled together over the years that help people to facilitate rapid change, you know, uh, making more money, having a better relationship, having better physical health, and so on. I can see where that would be key because everything everybody wants everything right now, instant gratification, <laughs> right? I, yeah, no, it's true. It's like we want to change. We want to change. We want to change yeah, that. I want change, and I want it right now. <laughs> and people don't usually think about it from a change perspective. They want the result. I want that relationship right now. I want that money in the bank right now. I want that dream career right now. Uh, and I get it. You know, I, I think we all do. Um, we know that there's steps required to get it, but there's uh, part of what I help people to do is get their head in the game because you can know how to produce a result financially, for example, build an investment portfolio, you know how, but if your head's not in the game, that's a problem. And so you could have the best strategies in the world, but I think psychology is super, super important. So we focus on all aspects of that. And then also helping people increase their skills um, so that they can really capitalize on their opportunities as well. Yeah. I mean, mindset, it's really starts with mindset, doesn't it? 100%. Being able to change your mindset from what it is to where it needs to be. Yeah, hundred percent. And, uh, you know, and oftentimes we need help from other people and from outside people because it's, you can't read the label from the inside of the jar. So when you're stuck in the problem, oftentimes all you see is the problem and we need people that can, can help and, and see it from a different perspective, um, whether that's a coach or a guide or, you know, good friends. Problem is, is that all advice is not equal, <laughs> you know, so we want to make sure that we're looking to get our advice from the best sources and stuff on the, on the path. But um, I, I think that people uh, from an outside perspective can help us to see our life more completely or see a problem more completely or see our solutions uh, more readily. And so I, I'm a big fan of coaching and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like I, I heard a guy say one time, you know, cause you, like I say, well, I'm not very good at this or I'm not very good at that. And he said, I'll tell you what, go to 10 people, you know, friends and relatives and let ask them what do you think I'm good at and let them tell you you'll be surprised yeah yeah it might you might draw the strengths to the surface that you didn't know existed um and, and the other uh, the flip side of the coin too I have um a friend who's a consultant for a company and she's working on a project right now and they did a survey um to find out you know the the, the readiness of the team for, to prepare for change. And the survey was about that. And so she was asking questions uh, about, uh, you know, do you have the right job aids? Do you have the right things that you need to be able to succeed here? Asking those types of questions where they got the feedback back. Oh my God, the, like this, the, the, the toxic environment that was present that you wouldn't have understood was there had you not asked the right questions um, would just sink an organization. And, and so uh, having an accurate idea from people around us and getting that feedback can be super important, both for identifying those strengths, but also those things that would take you down if you, if you didn't recognize it sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, especially in, in companies, because you, you sit there and you go, this is great. We're wonderful. But then when you get right down into it, 
no, we're not so wonderful after all. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and people just don't realize it because they're so used to their surroundings. It's this way. It's always been this way. So it must be great. Yeah, and if you don't recognize it, you're doomed to continue to repeat the same problems over and over and over again uh, until you, you recognize that and do something about it so that you can facilitate change. And we're the same way in our own lives. We have those blind spots in our games, in our own lives. And unless we have people that are uh, helping us and to guide us along the way, we, we just don't see them. And that's been my experience. And I, like I've had great coaches along the way myself that have helped me through some, some tough and challenging times that I, there's no way I would have seen those things had I not had great guidance. I just wouldn't see them. <laughs> yeah. I worked for a company and change was a four letter word there. That <laughs> you mentioned change anything it's like oh no oh no we've always done it this way for 25 years and it's always worked and and i mean it's like well maybe we ought to just maybe do this you know well, some other companies are doing it. it's working pretty good for them oh no 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 so i mean I, and it was crazy I, I mean we were like in the stone age compared to other competitors right I, i'll tell you how bad it is we had dot matrix printers <laughs> and we had an, our estimating system was a DOS based system. We had one computer that everybody in the whole company had to do estimates on. And they had like, and they had bought like 25 of these dot matrix printers when they were going out. I mean, that's, I'm serious. That's the mentality. You know, <laughs> well, and I, you know, at some level I get why people would want to defend things because when you've been in business, for example, for a long time, you have an understanding of what works. You know these things work, and you also know what doesn't work because you've got this lifetime of experience. However, uh, there are things that we miss out on as a result of that, that desire to hold just to what it is that we know. And those things that we miss out on could be the very things that would put us you know, into hyper growth or uh, cause us to excel. So I get it. Yeah, we get stuck in holding patterns. And once again, the same thing for individuals. We get stuck in those holding patterns. When you talk about lifting your story, I think the way we lift our story is to elevate our own behaviors, um, to move out of those holding patterns. If it's in a corporation, to identify those areas that we need to improve, polish up our weaknesses until they become our greatest strengths, focus on identifying our strengths that we can really build on. All of those things are important. And that, boy, that requires development. And that requires somebody looking for it and, and, and helping you to, to see it in that way. Um, but we all can have great coaches. They could be family members. They could be people around us. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody we pay to do that, but we need, um, and when we pay people and find the right people, that helps, it can help in, in huge, huge ways. So all of the above, I think. Yeah. Uh, people have a misconception, I think, that coaching cost, you know, that's their first thing. What well, it cost, but then it cuts the learning curve. It, I mean, it gets you right to where you're going to go. So if you take the big picture, it pays. It doesn't really cost. 100%. Yeah. It's like, uh, I, and I can say like the last coaching that I got, it cost a lot of money. You know, I put down some money for it, but when I came out, my life had changed and I was in a in infinitely better place, uh, for having done it. And, uh, and I don't think it's, you know, it's funny because people come into personal development, whether it be coaching or a seminar program or books, that they, read, they come in and they think, Oh, seminars don't work. But then it's not, does the seminar work? That's like saying taking a bath doesn't work. You, you have to do it on a regular basis. <laughs> That's what, you know, so it's all about what's your lifestyle. What are you uh, weaving into your lifestyle that elevates you and holds you to a higher standard? Because I know my natural tendency is if I'm not being guided, if I'm not in saturation environments, my natural tendency is to do the things that don't put me in the best space of mind, you know, <laughs> to get up and read the news first rather than getting up and setting my day up and stuff. If I don't have some sort of system of accountability, I, my tendency is to go the other way. And then, uh, and I pay the price for that when I do that, so. It's yeah. interesting, sorry, I just wanted to say quickly, it's interesting, we're okay to invest in like an upgrade on our computer, but we have a hard time investing on upgrades to ourselves. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, you know, I've been one who will always put myself in classes. So right now um, I'm teaching courses, but I'm taking three classes right now uh, mostly in storytelling, which is which is interesting with the uh, title of your podcast, um, but mostly in storytelling, uh, so that I can improve my ability to uh, deliver for my students. But also, I'm I'm coaching people in that as well, helping them to elevate how they tell the story of their life because that narrative that we share with people about who we are 
um, reinforces either old holding patterns or can help to elevate us out of those old holding patterns because understanding how to tell our story in a powerful way causes us to have to put a, a bigger frame around our experience that, 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 uh, that allows us to sort for what was positive from that experience rather than what was negative. And when we hear people sharing the negative aspects of their life and they, but they could be stuck in this holding pattern where their whole story and the narrative they live within is a woe is me narrative or a victim, a victim mentality type narrative, which is just gonna repel all sorts of success and, and cause them to attract things they don't want. But when they change that narrative and change the story um, that they're telling about their life, then it also heals what's happening on, inside of them oftentimes and puts things into a different perspective. Yeah, I believe it was Dennis Whiteley that said, you know, people have trouble reaching their goals, you know, attaining things. And he said, okay, look, all you have to do is when you're doing whatever you're doing, think it's what I'm doing right now, moving me towards my goal. If it's not, don't do it, <laughs> you know, right? because, you know, busy work, you know, when, you know, you do all those things that you think you're really doing something, but you're really, you're really not working towards where you need to go. Yeah. hundred so. percent. And then, and then there's, so you've got that and it's like, okay, well, I can correct my behaviors if I don't do the things that are taking me away from my goals. But what happens when I get in an intense emotional state, I'm stressed out of my mind, I'm overwhelmed, and then I just need escape. And then I start acting in ways that are out of alignment with the goals and, and perhaps uh, harmful um, to myself or to people around me and stuff like that. So it's correcting how we live our lives that, that enables us to move through those periods and, and stay, the, stay the course. Yeah, I think emotions really hurt us a lot of times. Can, yeah. Or, or and, and what we would probably look at and say is it's the inability to manage our states of mind and emotion that hurts us because there's got to be a way to move through that. Somebody's doing it right. <laughs> you know, it's just not us at the time <laughs> when we're stuck. <laughs> you know, a little setback, you go, oh gosh, you know, well, maybe tomorrow I'll feel better. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so right? you, tomorrow becomes next week, next month next year if you're not careful yeah and and you know we could have success in one area of our life uh, and we're seeing that in the news these days right now we're seeing examples of people that created enormous success from a financial perspective but behind the scenes their relationships were a shamble and they're on the verge of divorce or um you know behind the scenes there's there's other things that are happening where you look at that and there's there's drug abuse or there's things that and you look at it and you go wow um, maybe there's, uh, you know, we, maybe there's something for us to learn about what it really means to be successful, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe it's more holistic than we think. And if we look at it and we're on, and we're honest with ourselves, I think every one of us has areas of our life where it's like, well, I'd like to elevate that. I'd like to change the way I'm showing up there, or I'd like to take charge of that, take charge of my finances or take charge of my health or the way I'm showing up in my relationships and so on. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think and there's lots of ways for us to take charge of that. We can put ourselves in saturation environments and seminars. We can read books. We can find great coaches and guides and just make that commitment to continually be improving there. Um, I think that's all we can do, right? So it's about progress, not perfection. Yeah. So tell me about great leaders build other leaders. I really like that. Yeah. Well, well and it's interesting right now in social media, right? There are the, uh, the, focuses on getting followers, right? I mean, followers, followers, followers. But we've heard before that a great leader is not somebody who's collecting followers, but rather creating other leaders. Um, that's leverage. That's the way to change the world. When you look at people that have gotten 10, 20, 30, or thousands of people or more conspiring for the success of their goals, that's where you get real transformation ability, the ability to shift uh, things from where they are to where you want them to be. So, and that's what leadership's about. The only way to do that is to gain leverage by creating other leaders. And so one of the things that I've endeavored to do over the years is, is teach teachers, teach uh, people that are, are sharing the, the gift of transformation or sharing the insights and the understandings. And I'll, I'll tell you one of the, the highest compliments that I've ever gotten came just recently, I got an email where somebody said, you know what, my life is incredible. I've got this incredible relationship. I, you know, I've got the, my dream career and it's because I trained with one of your students. Wow. And so, yeah. And it's like, 
I can get that stuff said about me all the time. That's one thing, but it's because they trained with somebody who trained with me 10 years ago. You know, it's just like, that's, that, that is cool. That's where there starts to be a, a tidal wave effect. You know, yeah. what, what you're doing is working. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and that makes, uh, you know, there's pride in that and there's, uh, you, you know, you, you want to be a part of something that's making an impact, I think, or at least I do. Um, uh, so, and, and I know it's not an isolated case. I know there's lots of those out there that just made it through to me and it stood out in my mind and it makes you feel good. Well, you know, the, our, our world is kind of squirrely right now, but, but I think really people are striving for transformation. They're wanting to make the world a better place. They're wanting to get along with everybody. I mean, I, there's a, there's a kind of a, I'll guess a grassroots movement, maybe you might want to call it, but people are wanting things to be better for everyone. Yeah. And I think that and the, the path to that is microcosm, macrocosm, right? It's, it's being who we need to be. Like, like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. So if we're being the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be, not just in relationship to what we want to get out of life, but in relationship to the, how we're contributing on a larger scale and uh, you know, who we're being that is elevating the lives of many, when we take charge of who we're being as an individual, uh, that's if everybody did that, you'd have the whole world changed. And so uh, I think it, it always starts within ourselves and, and who we're being. And uh, ultimately, I think it comes down to character. You know, who, who are we being from a character perspective? And we're all making mistakes, you know, every single one of us. So it's not about perfection once again, but at least having the, the desire to, to look and become the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. Um, you which find, is why too. Oh, sorry. I just yeah. ask, do you find that you that you get into I find a lot of people that one of the things that they struggle with a lot is fear I get that yeah I get it I mean uh, you know because I've been there and it's you go through your life and sometimes you know I've been in places where I've just been terrified um, <laughs> you know terrified that something's not going to work or you know even if you're making bigger amounts of money because now, at one point in my path, I was doing 23 weekend seminars a year and each one was a million dollar event. And so I was traveling around, but then the problems were just bigger problems. You know, if you had one event that didn't go the way it was supposed to go, you're, you put everybody out of business, everybody loses a job. So just because you've got more uh, revenue coming in doesn't mean that you've handled your stress issues. And, and, and that, you know, when, when, with that kind of stress, it's easy to be, and the, what is the stress? The stress is terror, is that fear um, it manifested in the body, right? Uh, at some level. And so, um, yeah, I've been in those places and it's like, how do you, how do you manage that? How do you handle that? And I think there's life things that we can do, you know, putting it, I just came from jujitsu uh, this morning. So weaving things like that, physical things into our routine that help us to work it out. But then there's mental things and there's daily practice things. And, you know, the, the things that, that elevate the way we're showing up that allow us to manage those states of mind and emotion. That once again, nobody ever taught us how to do that in school. Um, <laughs> here's how you manage your, here's how you have peace of mind. You know, it would have been nice if they did. <laughs> and I think there may be some transition into education to give you more life skills now, which I think we, we need, really need. Don't you, I mean, don't you think like, cause that shows up nowhere in the school system. I think of back to some of the things I learned in school is like, you know, whether it's advanced mathematics, which is real specialty. Some people are going to make use of that, but not uh, most people won't make use of that ever. Basic math people need for finance and stuff like that. But whether, you know, you look at advanced math, you look at uh, home economic for certain people, or you look at wood shop for certain people. I, I guess they give you that broad knowledge, but they don't teach you how to manage your states of mind and emotion. If you don't manage your states of mind and emotion, you wind up in the gutter, <laughs> you know, either emotionally, psychologically, or literally. Um, uh, so, so all of these things are so super critical in terms of, of life management and, and uh, you know, the types of relationships we have, the, the type of career path. Mm -hmm. So what, what is neuro design engineering? Oh, that's a, that's a term that I coined um, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so it's it, it, much of my foundation, the foundation of my work comes from things like neuro linguistic programming and, what I called neurodesign engineering, which is just uh, learning to utilize your mind-body apparatus in the most powerful way to design and engineer the life that you want to create. Uh, 
And, you know, I think that probably in the beginning, I focused a lot on that. So it was like the basis and foundation of everything I did was conscious and unconscious programming. So we could take charge, upgrade our mindset and produce a different result. Since then, over the years, I've added other things that I thought were really critical. The whole notion of elevating someone's story and changing the narrative that they're playing within or uh, notions such as, you know, uh, raising your vibration that we hear about a lot. These are yeah. things that you can do or changing the quality of the conversations that you're having with people, taking charge of your thinking, managing your states of mind and emotion. All of these things are kind of eclectic tools that come together to help us live better lives. Um, and I, I'll be collecting for the rest of my life in terms of tools, I think. <laughs> you know, never stop learning, right? Right. You got to. You got to. What about your books? Tell us about your books. Uh, I wrote, uh, well, I, I guess I wrote three books. One was just a compilation book, um, but I did, uh, uh, I did two. I, my first book I wrote in 2005, that was called Turning Passions into Profits. And it was, you know, my, my, my background once again came from accelerating human transformation. So I used to teach clinical hypnosis all across North America, taught in Canada as well, Ontario. Um, so, uh, so I've taught, I was teaching clinical hypnosis around the world. Uh, like every weekend I was in a different state traveling around. And then I worked for the largest NLP training company in the world. We ended up becoming 10 times larger. So we grew the largest NLP training company in the world. Um, so that book was, and all of that stuff is about accelerating transformation, rapid change. Um, and so when I wrote Turning Passions into Profits, that was my, that was my focus. But what was in my heart was wanting to live my dreams, wanting to live my dreams. And so that the turning passions of the prophets became me applying tools of accelerating transformation to the creation of one's dreams and, and turning that into profit. So I wrote that in 2005 um, and I applied those principles and I went from being $70,000 in debt to making, you know, I think, I believe we did a 600 grand my first year in business. Then we did 3 million and then just kept growing and growing and growing. So the application of the principles absolutely changed all that. And I, there's no way I would have been able to create any of that stuff had I not applied those principles. Then I wrote another book in 2000, uh, 2010 called uh, Instant Wealth, Wake Up Rich, um, which was, it sounds a little gimmicky as a title, right? But um, it was about upgrading your mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset. And I was really proud of that book. Uh, it was, it was uh, really well written, but it talks about the importance of, of being rich in the here and now. Being rich is a state of mind and emotion. It's not a dollar amount in the bank. So it talks about changing your mindset now to become an attractor and to create ever expansive wealth in your life. It's interesting. I was telling my daughter that too. I've gone through ups and downs, but I've never felt poor. No matter what, I've never felt poor. I've been without anything, still didn't feel poor because I never had that mindset. And she goes, I hate being poor. I hate being poor. She, I mean, she's struggling. She's a millennial. You know, she's going back to school in engineering. I know she's going to do really well, but she has her own self-doubts and right. fear. But I said, you're, one of your issues is, is you're looking at the future for one and you're seeing yourself as poor today. And, and those are mindsets that are not good. She goes, how do you keep going? That's how I kept going. I never saw myself right. as poor. Yeah. Yeah, you're in the flow then and you're, and you're more attractive for resources and opportunities and your conversations change when you're in that space. You're, the people you surround yourself with change when you're in that space. So um, yeah, 100%. Um, and so, and then there's strategies that you can use to grow beyond that, to create the, you know, ever expansive uh, wealth and life. Um, but mindset, once again, comes back to mindset and mindset is everything. And I've had times in my life where I, I, I did, I, I mean, I was stressed out of my mind financially and I was trying to get creative. I've had many times like that. Um, but in, in turning those situations around, it always started with elevating my mindset first and then um, and then implementing that. Um, I, I remember reading, I don't know if you ever read the, the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. Um, as I pondered the thought, that's a book of spiritual reframes around wealth. And in, in the beginning, I, that book was really instrumental in terms of helping me to start to elevate my mindset. But I studied other things and, and kept going with that. But that was certainly a, a good starting point for that. Very good. Right. Thank you. So Chris, yeah. how, can our, how can our listeners reach out to you? Um, you can, uh, you can find me. There's a couple of things like I've always got, uh, some sort of gift that, uh, we're, uh, we're giving. Um, if you go to, this is the website that's popping into my mind right now, go, go to chrishowardgift.com. And if you go to that website, 
Um, you'll see whatever program we have coming up that'll be a free program or something that we're giving scholarship to. So that's chrishowardgift.com. Or you could also go to, if you're interested in speaking, and uh, I've got a program called Speak and Grow Rich 365. Uh, and that program is free as well. And it's an email that you get every day that teaches you how to amplify your message, get it out to the masses and also the business behind it. So that's kind of a fun uh, free program too. That's speakandgrowrich365.com. Okay, great. Fantastic. That's great for our listeners. Yes. Definitely go check that out. I know I will. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, really good to connect with you guys. Absolutely. You as well. It was, it was awesome to meet you. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, great to meet you. And if uh, I can ever be a service or if we ever want to connect in the future, I'm here. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we would like to have you come back at some point, you know, because I, awesome. I don't think we scratched the surface yet, have we? I don't think we have. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, a good, it's a good start. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, guys. Right, Take thank care. You. Thank you for listening to this episode. Be sure to visit us at lifterstory.com.